flight boss, bitch, you know, for sure. You're not listening to the mind of an Atari's moon. I'm not a change of Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And right now, I want to talk about something real quick because so many people think that you have to dive a little deeper into what you actually have to dive into and actually to know what you actually have. Because a lot of people, you may look at celebrities and look at certain other people who, who may have succeeded in areas and in realms of realities where you want to succeed at, but a lot of times you feel like they have something that you don't necessarily have. And it's not that. It's just may, it, your frequency may not be matching that frequency wave. Or if your frequency is matching that frequency wave because you have a lot of great ideas in that realm of reality, it may just be you're not vibrating hard enough because you don't know how to insert your energy in there. That's almost like walking into a house party or walking into a group setting and not knowing how to stand out. So you, you blend in so much, you never receive any of the energy. And energy, pay, pay close att attention. Paying attention. That's what brings energy. With something that people are, a person, place, or thing is paying attention to. So if it's not even a person, metaphysically, an energy, a person who's carrying a certain frequency is gonna attract certain energies. That's, that's the real law of attraction. And people got a lot of misconceptions on law of attraction also. This law of attraction, uh, the, the key of law of attraction is always going to attract the opposite. So if you know it's always going to attract the opposite, then you know what realms of realities uh, law of attraction. Like people think that, okay, if I, if I think about this long enough, I'm going to attract that. No, that's not law of attraction. And I'm going to do another video on law of attraction. Whatever, this is law of attraction. Whatever you're constantly thinking about that you want to attract, you're going to attract the opposite first. And then when the universe and the Elohim see, or God, see how you handle the resistance, depending on how high you're vibrating and how much force you have on the resistance to push it back. Is going to is going to help you be able to see or manifest into and vibrate into your what you what you want to see, but the the whole process is out of your hands. So if you don't know thyself and you don't know and you don't know the actual concept of <clears throat> if, you, if you don't know the motherfucking actual concept of motherfucking law of attraction, then you're going to be attracting a bunch of things that you can't even handle. So your resistance to it or your force field back the energy that you give back to it may be very small. So the universe may not give you what you the fruits of labor out of what you wanted in that realm of reality because it see that you can't handle it. See that's how the universe show you that's you ever heard that saying, God only give you what you can handle, right? That's true. The universe and God itself only gives you how much is that's the way it's that's the way God constructed the universe to do it. So if your resistance to the force of when it comes back isn't large enough, it's the the universe the universe not gonna over not gonna consume you. Sometimes it, it consumes things, but it's not just gonna consume your your soul and your spirit. It may just consume your body and your soul. So once it does that, then it, it shows that you're not ready for any up going in that realm of reality. So that's after the law of attraction and stuff, that's when the universe starts seeing to give you what you can handle or not because it's see your resistance force. Um, and that's what you that's what you have to experience. That's just like a, a person, whatever you in, you're going to experience the opposition of it first. And then when you get what you uh, have or what you want, it goes on a higher level. You start vibrating on a higher level and start manifesting faster and receiving more and receiving uh, law of attraction more and more frequently karma and things of that nature more frequently but that's a whole nother video with this video right here I want to talk about the specifics of if you want to know your power you don't have to look that that deep if you want to know your power off the back your power is your conjunctions so if you go look at your conjunctions if you want to go look at a celebrity or things of that nature not when you go look at what they do nine times out of ten go to their planetary alignments and nine times out of ten what they do match their planetary alignments now how they kind of craft it and kind of seeing their position that they were how how it holds how their traits hold into their life based upon their life situation and their houses that's how things may take place but for the most part, this is what they just have. Like your planetary alignments is if you just stood in the house and never went outside and did anything. You still have your planetary alignments. You still have your houses, but you may not be activating none of your houses if you're not going out in the world and experience. You see what I'm saying? Now, the first thing, 
to activate your houses is to go out experience so you go out and personally put your personal self in the world so it becomes your personality your personal issues and personal people places and things in your life so that becomes the first house once you develop that then you get the second you get the second house um is things that you value and what you have to offer to the world whether it's, it's internally or externally internally is like if it's a talent emotion feeling expression or whatever externally is like a material thing or a person place or thing even things that you value then it could be a person place or thing Thing. That's when it comes to the second house of evolution of life. Then you take that to the third house, and that's the, the, the your surroundings, your neighborhood, and what's familiar to you, whether that's a person, place, or thing. Then you take that within the home, and what's private to you, and how to gain emotional stability amongst yourself. Uh, um, you know what I'm saying? And how, and wherever you feel most comfortable at, whether that's a home, relative house, or whatever. And that's the fourth house. Then you go into the fifth house. How you express yourself and receive expressions from other things that you choose to entertain, whether that's a person, place, or thing, or conversation, or entertainment factors in general, and your creative endeavors. Then you go into the evolution of the sixth house. You see, you see how the more you go into evolutions, you get denser. Sixth house is more of things you do on a routine, day-to-day -day basis work, health, and anything that you're working on. You see them scan and scheduling. See what I'm saying? Then you go into the seventh house. Then you can relate this. How you relate in all relationships on all bases. How you relate to people, places and things and all kinds of, in all your relationships. Then we get to the eighth house where we talk about uh, the behind the scenes realm, the alternative motive behind what you're relating to, whether there's a person, place, or thing. What is the m real meaning and, and intention and alternative motive and behind the scenes realm to why is this thing right here in the first place? And then we get to the ninth house, how to get enlightened about these things, get higher, higher educated about the, uh, get highly educated about these things, add a spiritual nature to these things, add meaning and reason, reasoning, and and travel long distance, whether it's externally or internally. We know internally is in the yin realm, or travel long distance externally um, in the yang realm. And we go in the tenth house is this is what you're known for now, how you're going to be seen, your status, your house of status, and ultimately later on in life that that becomes your career if you're effectively activating that house. And then you go to the eleventh house. This is how you conduct yourself in the public arena. Or, or or dealing with the unknown, whether that's mysticism, astrology, occult, or science, or dealing with the unfamiliar, whether that's unfamiliar people, places, or things. You know what I'm saying? It's like not your brothers or sisters, but maybe your cousins, your second cousins. You know what I'm saying? Not the story you go to on your side of town, but the story you may go to on another side of town. That's 11th house type things. Going to the mall. Then also, uh, yeah, public relations and publications and things like that. Then you go to the 12th house. The uh, things, you, how you already subconsciously act, how you already subconsciously do things, and how you already subconsciously place yourself in, in the collective conscious of the world. So that's the 12 houses. And I don't even know why I just ran all them down, but I just felt that I had the spirit to run those down real quick based upon knowing what kind of planetary alignments you have and knowing that you, what houses that your planets is in. These all things could tell you what you're actually good at. You see what I'm saying? So for the uh, for the most part, your powers is your conjunctions. You know what I'm saying? Your gifts is your sextile. I mean, is your trines. So and all these could be good or bad, depending on what planet and what planetary alignments is aligning with each other. That's gonna and based upon a description of them, that's gonna tell you whether it's good or bad. Because you can you might have a sextile and a trine, but uh, but if it's a if it's a moon trine Mars, that's not a good trine. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. What you're getting is still all plays a part. So conjunctions is your power. Sextiles is your opportunities. Trines is your gifts. And squares is your learning processes. Oppositions is your ops. And conjunctions, uh, you know, and your sextiles and trine is the energy you give off. And squares and opposition is the energy you're going to receive from others or, per, or people, places, and things. And conjunction could be either or. Conjunction is going to be the power you give off and you receive. So when we talk about the conjunctions, that's your power. So say for an example, um, if you say you have the sun, the sun conjunct Saturn, right there. That's that's a power. Like your actions, the way you act and how you see things has the power of uh, being down to earth, being in reality, knowing how to construct from point A to point B, knowing how to regulate. So you'll be more serious and more reality based and down to earth than somebody who don't know how to put their dreams in fruition under somebody who don't know how to you know what I'm saying and vice versa someone who may have uh, 
someone who may have the sun could jump Mercury. This person have no matter what sign it is, they could be a, a Pisces. If they sun could jump Mercury, they're still going to have the sense and the gift of communicating, thinking, and analyzing effectively. Um, and knowing the ways of others, of how other people think and communicate and analyze and know how to jump in and out of conversations. This is a gift they have. You see what I'm saying? These people could, their actions, and, and a lot of celebrities who may have the sun could jump Mercury, you may see that you may see them as some type of public social type thing or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like a public social person or this, that, and a third. Regardless of the sign, you know what I'm saying? It could be you could be all watered up depending on your planetary alignments, it might change the dynamics of things and things of that nature. Just like, uh, okay, the moon, let's go to the moon conjunct us. Uh, if you got the moon conjunct Jupiter, you know what I'm saying? Your, your, your inner self, who you are, your and your emotional stance on things is very wise, may have a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, maybe can receive education very well and know how to connect to it in an emotional way, also know how to place themselves in circumstances where they can experience what they want to experience and experience what makes them comfortable and not and not ex and anytime they start to experience people places or things that start to seem like it's taking them away from something that's close or familiar to them they can start getting uncomfortable you see what i'm saying so this would be a power and like like i said it's a gift and a curse to everything once you once you talk about the two planets and come break down the description that'll let you know if it's a good or bad power but at the same time it's a power you have and as long as you know that that's a power you can learn about it and utilize it to the best way that you know how so it can activate whatever you need to happen in your life you see what I'm saying? That's just like the same way um, a person who may have uh, Venus Venus could jump Mars. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they willpower, intentions, passions, motivations, desires have the power of being loving, being appreciated. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You may be aggressively, you may be aggressive when it comes to compromising. You know what I'm saying? You may be a little aggressive when it comes to relating, but that's what your intentions is. That's what you desire to do, to be relatable. And in the same vice, same way, uh, Venus is how you love, appreciate, value, and how you relate to others. So a lot of times, you may only relate to your own desires a lot of times. You may only appreciate what you passionately want to do at times. You know what I'm saying? You may only love your own intentions at times. But you know what I'm saying? That's the gift and the curse that it may have when you have uh, when you have Mars conjunct Venus as a power. You know what I'm saying? So pay close attention to your pay close attention to your um, your conjunctions because your conjunctions is your powers. And if you don't have many conjunctions, pay close attention to your trines because your trines is your gifts. Now your gifts is always going to make you uncomfortable when you're expressing it to others because it's something like you already have. So inside you, you feel like it's a doubt to even express it. Like I don't know why it come out like that, but it does. Usually, usually when you come up, when you come across a lot of people who's overly excited or overly try to push their self on you or overly try to push their talent or what they can do on you, a lot of times those be the people who don't have it. You know what I'm saying? Who don't have the talent. So that's part of their square or opposition that they're going through in order to get to a place that they may have it. But a lot of times that factor of being in your face and and proving to you that they do got it whether they have it or not that's the work that the square put in to make that person great see it's a gift and curse to everything as into a person with a try a lot of times they may they, they may have the talent to get wherever they need to go but they may they may feel the need that they don't they may feel the, feel like sometimes they're too good to do certain things or feel like they're be too better to do it like that because they know their own talent. But see, it'll play out in lack of motivation. It'll play out in lack of actually achieving what you have, your gift, because you're too busy sitting back thinking you're too good for things or you're not getting into the mix. So there's something that, see, so the square op person could learn how to actually cultivate their talent by the sextile and trying person but then vice versa the trying to sextile person can actually learn how to put it in people's faces and make it a reality and go through the rejection that they may feel as a doubt a lot of times with the uh, squares and oppositions a lot of times squares and oppositions they go for they go for the negative response a lot of times so a lot of times they start to receive more positive response than negative because they're putting it like rejection energy Reject, you won't get nowhere without the rejection energy. I don't care what you try to do. If you're not incorporating the rejection energy, like people think rejection, look, it's nothing bad on this earth. But you need certain, if you're trying to go into realms of realities and portals, you need certain energies for that, 
for that realm to be successful for whatever you're trying to do or whatever fruits of labor you're trying to get out of of whatever portal that you're diving into ran by intellectual being like like when i say shit like that i mean look we're on earth ain't nothing wrong with it you know what i'm saying just like a, uh, you, you see a person every day and say like i need a job i don't know what the fuck you talking about so in in on earth really is nothing it's nothing wrong with it it's just how we conducting it and how we are creating our realm of reality for us for ourselves and the stronger mentally we get and the stronger we know how to create our circumstance we, everybody can get to a point where they don't need it but to the point now that people need a job they just at just the, at this level that everybody vibrating at is just we do the best we can at these levels you know what i'm saying there's nothing wrong with it but at the same time you know what i'm saying you need to understand what you need to understand that um Rejection is a is an energy that's needed. Like you can't go nowhere because look, for a person who's scared of a rejection, their their freq they're not gonna their frequencies is never gonna go into no realms or realities, no portals. And your frequency is a, it's like a line, it's like a light. That's why this is this is your spirit flying, your frequency. This is why when you get into your mind, your thoughts, your ideas, you're in the yin realm flying. You know what I'm saying? And based upon your roof and, and how much ideas and thoughts that you have and how many under mental blocks under aka metaphor roofs and houses that you're up under is based upon how high you can fly. Some people some people's spirits is not flying at all. Some people's spirits is right here on earth with them. You see what I'm saying? Some people's spirits is motherfucking right here on earth with them. You know what I'm saying? And that's another video. You know what I'm saying? We can get into details of how somebody can't even, they don't even have any ideas to really to think for themselves or anything. But that's a whole different video. But when we get to, when we get to, as far as the art of rejection, rejection is not negative. This is what happened because when you talk about the law of attraction, right, and you're trying to do something, it, it is going to create the energy to come, the opposite energy of whatever you're trying to do. So this is why a lot of times when people enter certain religions or they enter certain things and say, say you're trying so hard to do something, but you, you never get out of it what you try to do. You, you see what I'm saying? It's either you're not vibrating hard, long, that's really, either that's not your frequency you're supposed to be in, that's not your spirit not supposed to be in that realm of reality, absorbing that shit, or you're not vibrating high enough in that realm of reality. You know what I'm saying? You're not causing enough energy to wave around you. You're being overwhelmed and over blew by the waves of energy with your spirit. See, so it's like a when you go into there. So at the same time, it's like you may you may the reason why you're not vibrating, if it is your frequency, the reason why you're not vibrating hard enough because you're not actually taking the right path into that realm of reality that you're supposed to be doing. It's almost like, say, say you, say you going, well, how can I make this an example? Say, say like, all right, say you want to do something, say you want to be a successful business person, right? And, but it's not working out for you, right? And say this realm of reality is called for you to do certain things the right way. So look at this realm of reality of you trying to get this business straight as a, when you step into this portal, it's like a, it's like a middle of a street or a freeway or something like that and cars coming now what you have to do is walk in the street with cars coming because you see other people doing it but you're, you're thinking like man i can't really do that so in this realm of reality it's like you're walking on a side so you can't get hit so yeah this is something you want to do but it, you're not sure if you want to walk in the middle of the street or not like you see other people doing it you like you don't see these other people getting hit but you see cars coming and stuff you looking at them like dang how they ain't getting hit like, I want to do that too, but I ain't sure. I think I get hit by a car, so you're walking on the side. You know what I'm saying? But that's AKA how, how it would look metaphorically. But in this realm of reality, you may just be trying to go uh, be the, the district manager at a job or something like that. You see what I'm saying? So if you if you going into that job and you you never get to district manager, it's because you went into that realm, realm of reality and you just walked on the sidelines. Like, you ain't, you ain't get in the mix. You ain't get in the middle. You see what I'm saying? And then you're going to have a, and, and don't get me wrong, you're going to have a, a bunch of people on it walking with you on the sideline. Like, yeah, I would walk in the middle of the street too, but nah, I don't know about that. You see what I'm saying? If y'all get what I'm trying to say. So at the same time, it's like the resistance you're getting, 
you you you're not getting the energy, the full effect energy of not knowing if you if if you gonna walk in the street or get hit or not, not knowing if it's all right and safe if you walk in the street or not. You're not knowing if you're not knowing if you're gonna be all right and experiencing it, so you can tell somebody else. Nah, if you walk in the middle of the street for some reason, the cars go around. That's why we see another people walking in the middle of the street, aka flourishing in their realm of reality that they see in the Yang realm. You see what I'm saying? That's basically what it is. So you can't be scared. It's like a form of the rejection that you can't be f afraid of because the, that's the universe or God's test of trying to see if you can handle the energy that your frequency is putting out because you you always going to get what you ask for. You know what I'm saying? And you have to understand that too. And Like with prayer. Like if you're a person who pray, you have to understand you always going to get what you ask for. So if you're sitting around... And, and for an example, you want $30 at the same time, you're going to get what you asked for. You're going to get some more circumstances and situations of wanting $30. You're not going to get $30. Like God and universe don't give a fuck about that. It give a fuck about the energy you're giving off. That, see, and people who, not, who didn't travel in the yin realm enough in their life would never understand that. It's about the energy first. And if the, if the yin came... If the inner soul was first before the body, then praying for something that came after the body is is really going backwards metaphorically, but you think you're going forward because of whatever Elohim external already plant here from you. See, they already put something external out here for you. So you think you're supposed to pray for something that is external where the, where the whole key is, you're supposed to, you already have it inside. You see what I'm saying? Just like the way they had it. Who made, who made this shit? The Elohim. You see what I'm saying? So, whatever Elohim, whatever God you praying to, when you pray, you're giving them the energy and you're feeding them for the realm of reality that they created for you. You see what I'm saying? So, if you're praying for certain things in the realm of reality that they, that they're, that they created for you, you're giving them power. And that's, and they, you always going to get what you want. So, if you, if you say, uh, please, I want that new car, eventually... The Elohim is going to put you in a situation where you still want that car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not till you start to feel uh, appreciated for the things you do have and start to understand. That's when the Elohim will start looking at you like, okay, you know how to create your own illusion, your own realm of reality. And then it's going to be a form of resistance to that. You see what I'm saying? So when you, so this, for, the, for an example, say so you got the most beat up car on the block, right? But you, you think the world of this car. Like, people always see you cleaning it. Always see you doing this. And they just think, like, like this car is a piece of shit. This person always taking, taking care. All right, you about to get the, the other resistance. You about, to get, you about to get the resistance of people trying to say, the car is fucked up. That car ain't shit. And this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? To, to, try, to, to try to make the realm of reality to you that you shouldn't appreciate this car, right? And if you fall short to that, the universe gonna see that you can't handle the resistance. But if you if you rise above that and still think in your own world that it's the best car possible, the universe is gonna start to manifest what you're actually seeing. Because it is seeing that, okay, you can handle the scrutiny, you can handle the density and the wave of this inner of the opposite law of attraction energy. So if you can handle this much, then next time the wave can be bigger. The vibration can be bigger. The frequency can be bigger, a.k.a. the more stuff you could bring into the frequency hertz that you're vibrating at so you can actually see it in existence and you could touch it. So nine times out of ten, that person will be able to get the car that they want. And then that'll be the story that everybody in the hood be like, damn, damn, they got a super sweet ass car now, though. But remember they had that bum ass car that they, I swear they thought that car was the nicest car in the world. Yeah, and that's the person who got it. You know what I'm saying? Other than the flip side of things, you see how I flipped it on the negative side? How it, it doesn't matter what you set yourself out to do. Law of attraction always going to bring you the opposite. You know what I'm saying? You can't just go out here and be the most positive person in the world because you're gonna, you're gonna, all you're going to do is manifest the negative. You can't just go out, go out here and be the most negative person out in the world because, look, the most negative person out in the world, right, receive a bunch of positive. You ever seen like an Adolf Hitler and all that shit? You know what I'm saying? People who do the most negative shit a lot of times receive them.